everyone are you a law student or law graduate and do you often get confused over pursuing different kind of roles what role to choose whether to go with litigation corporate commercials or to pick up totally non conventional roles or you are a law graduate and you want to do a specialization degree and you get confused over it or is there work experience necessary for masters degree as well to answer all your burning questions today we have an expert with us we have archana sasan she is vice president legal counsel at dell international services india private limited welcome archana thank you yeah so starting with a very basic question and taking this uh, you know video from the start what advice would you like to give to law students who are thinking of joining a law school or starting their pursue starting of pursuing the legal field okay so uh, when students are in school you know academia still and are thinking of career paths then law is of course a great option for them but prior to deciding on whether law is the course for them it's important for them to do some research and i would say that if you decide that hey i want to be a lawyer then do some research on the kind of uh, colleges that you would like to uh, go to the kind of subjects that interest you uh talk to some people you know some seniors that you may know or some family members who are lawyers or some friends or family members and then take that decision so once and you will realize that law is not just one subject you know there are over 30 to 40 subjects that you study when you are studying in law school and therefore prior research is important and uh, my advice to anyone who would want to study law would be this that um, talk to people seniors alumni of those colleges look at some uh, facebook and uh, another social media information which is easily available to the young students and then take that decision to study law that's my advice to any youngster who would like to take on law as a subject or a career so sure. uh, but once uh... a student gets enrolled in a law school they often get confused between pursuing litigation or corporate law or picking up totally a non conventional path mm -hmm. uh, so how to get over this confusion and do internships internships play a vital role in it so uh the confusion is understandable as i said law is an expansive subject which gives you many opportunities it's not one single field and if you are confused between doing litigation or doing corporate law then that's understandable so the first thing for uh, you know upcoming students of law is that internships are very helpful because internships can be in a uh, law firm they can be with a senior in um, you know a high court or a supreme court they can also be in unconventional areas like uh, your uh, knowledge out process outsourcing units so that's another area of um, pursuit for many legal uh, students so i would say internships are important and when you take on an internship and uh, you know typically internships are for a period of 3 to 4 uh, weeks it's a very short uh, time and it's also a big time because that's the time you should be very aware of what is it that you're doing how are you feeling while you're doing that because clearly after a few weeks you see hey i can't imagine myself doing this for a lifetime that itself will tell you whether it is working for you or not and there are times when those four weeks will just go by and you will not even feel as if time has passed and that is an indication of something that you enjoy so uh, to answer your question internships are important that internships are to put it uh, you know in a very basic way it's a trial and error method that you do the internship you understand what is appealing to you where your heart is literally and then it gives you an insight on what your likes and dislikes are and the opportunities that you would like to pursue yes okay so that brings to that brings me to my third question uh, which is for law graduates out there and uh, many graduates want to pursue masters but there are a lot of options available some are doing llm some are doing mba or some are doing master just in peer pressure or just to mm -hmm. fill in the gap if they don't get job so uh, how to get over these confusions and is master really necessary when someone has already taken a 5 year 
a course in law and is having work experience also add an advantage before doing a master's degree so uh, masters is not necessary to practice law a lot of students whether it was in my time or in today as you said rightly do it because of peer pressure yeah and uh, clearly they look at it as an opportunity to network you know working with international students getting an idea of what they are doing and how it can help them in their uh, learnings in india but uh, no it's not that it's not important to practice not required to practice and what the students need to understand is what is the field in which they would like to practice and as we discussed there are so many more opportunities and more opportunities are today coming up in cyber security in using of ai in legal matters if a person has an interest in these kind of areas and they find a course in an llm degree which is helping them then i would say please go ahead and pursue it otherwise i will encourage people to work whether they work in a law firm or in a company and if individuals are working in an it company for example yeah. and they decide to do a course an llm with a master with a masters in cyber security for example then that will definitely help their careers but if you have decided that you want to do litigation then pursuing llm may not be that helpful you may do it because hey there are opportunities that you have your finances are manageable you have family uh, who who doesn't really who encourages you to uh, take on this international degrees but otherwise uh, i would say a it's not mandatory b it's important which field you want to pursue c if you're working in an area like privacy or it then an nlm in a cyber security or ai becomes important so it will help your career definitely okay uh, and i mean it was easier before covid but uh, do you think that covid has changed the whole scenario for law students now because we can only do remote internships and also online uh, you know masters degree have increased we have many options available and can you also list down after that some of the non conventional paths for law students which they can pursue over traditional roles like lawyers or pursuing litigation per se so i would agree that covid has practically changed everything for most of us not just lawyers and uh, now we are opening up so internships are happening uh, physically not necessarily online but those students who were uh, you know who couldn't do any physical internships the courses that they should be looking at because of covid creating the opportunities for them are like i mentioned uh, cyber security data protection uh, you have privacy which is again a big area where you can take on additional knowledge and add value and working in multinationals that encourage it because uh, cyber security is one area where you will find students in india do not have too many uh, courses at least the legal degrees uh, don't really offer too many and studying overseas or taking a law course online will definitely be helpful so covid has created opportunities in the, these areas another area where opportunity has increased is in uh, knowledge process outsourcing it was not kpos were not traditionally considered by many lawyers yeah. but what younger lawyers or new students will find that a lot of companies are outsourcing work to india and they are outsourcing work to india for review of contracts for support in uh, litigation for ip work which is global so this is a very uh, quick way of getting that global exposure even though people are unable to travel uh, due to covid or various reasons so yes there are these opportunities that have been created because of covid and younger students should consider it if anyone wants more information they can always reach out to their seniors or other al alumni in the colleges that's very important but yes these are the opportunities that have come across and they should learn to develop them and uh, lastly can you like quickly share some tips and tricks for today's law students maybe just three to four tips you know just to get through their law schools or graduation after graduation some tips and tricks 
So uh, one of the things that I want to share with uh, the, you know, the students who are listening is that law is fascinating. It is one of those subjects which gives you an in-depth insight into the makers of our country, the constitution, everything. So one of the tips is that develop a curious mind. You know, try to go uh, into the depths of any information that you get. That's a very important aspect of being a lawyer. Uh, spend time in a library, for example. You know, that's, that's important in, in your law college or otherwise. Read books which are not just related to law. You know, read books which are connected to legal space, like jurisprudence. You know, you read about uh, books written by certain judges in other countries. They give you ways and means of thinking. You know, even watching Sherlock Holmes becomes an exercise in fun. Reading Agatha Christie, how mysteries are solved. It gives you an insight on how the brain should be asking questions. And that's a habit that people should develop. So reading books, going to the library, getting a curious mind, developing a network. You know, tap into a network that you have of your seniors, alumni, as also people who know senior lawyers like myself. You know, when someone talks to me, and I not only talk to them, but I connect them to various others who I am familiar with, who have done all of the things that have been uh, required or answered over here in these questions. Uh, peer groups are often putting a lot of pressure on international studies, etc. But what I would like to tell people who are listening in is that taking that five year or three year course is helpful. You don't really need to do uh, any more and above that if you need to practice law in the country. But if you develop a healthy network, read, be curious, you know, understand the functioning of the mind, you know, proactively change the way the mind works and questions, uh, a lot of the first steps are taken towards becoming a lawyer. Yeah. I just had one uh, additional question which just popped in my mind mm -hmm. right now. Uh, you know, looking at today's scenario, do you think doing specialization is necessary like it was done in the old times? Or do you think having knowledge of, like, do you prefer specialization or being jack of all trades for today's law students? I mean, I often get confused. I'm a law yeah. graduate, so I often mm -hmm. get confused about doing a master's degree or, you know, just um, having knowledge of every law which is happening around me or trying some non-conventional role or giving try to some other jobs. So what's your So uh, I would say again, it's your interest. It is always today, more than the time when I passed out of law school almost 30 years back. Uh, today, specialization is being encouraged. Okay. So if you are a privacy lawyer, not only can you add value to Indian laws, but you can also be considered valuable for firms and companies across the world. Competition law. So to the best of my knowledge, I have seen that specialization became important almost 15, 20 years ago. And competition law is where it started. And litigation, of course, was always there. But I would say it depends on what it is that you would like to be. One of the things I have realized, and regardless of whether you're a lawyer or otherwise, you have to be conscious of how you want to shape your career. So when I started law and I start, joined the law firm, one thing I realized from the beginning was that I didn't want to do litigation. No. So even if, even if it is the no's that you have, you're mindful of, that's helpful. What is it that you don't like? So litigation is not something I like. I like advisory. Now within advisory, there was no, not much opportunity to specialize. But today I have seen that in law firms, people are specializing in privacy, in competition law, in regulatory issues, in uh, areas of policy. I have uh, people who have studied law in Harvard and have decided policy as a career option. Yeah. So. It depends on your interest. I prefer to be a generalist and I know that I can access uh, a specialist whenever I want, but then that's the career path that I chose. And very consciously, I chose to be in a law firm 
not do litigation. And after doing uh, the law firm for almost 17 years, for the last 10 years, I've been in a company. You know, that shift was very conscious. So you need to be mindful. And I have a lot of young lawyers who are coming to me and joining the outsourcing unit that we have. So again, they don't need to specialize. They are clearly contract lawyers and have decided that contract is going to be our go-to field for the future. So yes, specialization is important in today's day and age. But what it is and being a, that you need to be aware of and being a generalist is not a bad thing. Yeah. Yes. That okay. kind of thing, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for sharing your thoughts and tips and tricks with us, Arjuna. And uh, all of you watching the video, if you have any further questions, you can comment down and, you know, we will totally get back to you. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes.